Well, how do there, chums to say, Captain of the Steves, and today, chums, for you guys out there in the viewer verse, I have a video on mods and why I don't think mods are going to be coming into No Man's Sky anytime soon. So let's get into this, people. So this is going to be three parts to this video. It's all in one video, don't worry, but there's going to be three sections. So first, I'm going to cover off a poll that I did over on YouTube about what the community feels about it. Then I'm going to play you a video of Sean actually talking about problems with inside of the No Man's Sky Unity first and why they can't add in too much variety. And then I'm going to be showing some of the problems if they did use mods or something like mods like the super formula or change the algorithm all too much and what that might do to things inside of the community so here we go people let's hit this one up this is going to be a good one this is going to be i'm hoping it's going to be a good one anyway you'll, you'll be the judge of that hit a like if you think it's a good one that's, that's a good indication isn't it share it with others as well get them over here get their thoughts and feelings in right anyway let's jump on over to my poll there i am on my poll let's see if we can zoom in a little bit make that a little bit bigger for you guys there we go righto modded no man's sky how do you feel about it not seeing an option you like and a comment and a fair few people have there's 10 of those we'll get to them in a moment so food for thought good to see what the engine can do 41 percent and that's kind of where i sit with what i'm doing in my mod playthrough if you haven't seen my mod playthrough there's only two episodes you haven't missed much i put a video in top right hand corner don't like them play how the developers intended 15 percent now i kind of feel that way too i mean before i started using mods just to say what the engine can do that's kind of how i felt i always wait for no man's sky to give steer you know hello games are the people that put it into iteration let them steer how it develops and let them sort of put it out how it plays also because i make video guides if i've got mods on people can't really follow the guide can they you know love them use them all the time to enhance play 10 percent I think whenever there's a dry spell in a game or when there's no updates for a game and you want to sort of move the shelf life of that game on, you know, and it's not hurting anyone at all, yes, use mods. So yeah, fine. You know, watch them, but don't want to use them myself. So people are interested. They like watching it. When you add that one to that one, that gives you an overwhelming 62%. I'm going to keep doing them on my channel just until a new update drops and then I'll be removing mods and going back to my PlayStation 5 anyway and playing on my PlayStation 5. Pointless, they won't ever come to all platforms. And I think that's true. I think that's true from some of the research I've been doing and looking into all of this sort of shenanigans, which is the, the latter part of this video. I'm going to get to that at the end, people. So here we go. We've got a few comments inside of here. Yeah, mods are always great for games, increases their lifespan, which I agree with. Once the lifespan of that game has come to an end and the developer says, we're no longer doing anything with it, if it gets put into the hands of the community and the community increases its shelf life, I'm all for it. So I agree there. I want Hello Games to sponsor a mod community like Creators Club, especially if Hello Games plan to stop updating the game. Exactly. That's exactly the same point that I touched on there. I mean, it's worked for freaking Skyrim. That's been going for freaking years, thanks to the modding community. Giving more power to the player would be nice. When they have given more player power to the players with that sort of setting the difficulties and changing the game up how you wish, it does make me wonder whether they are going to do that when they move to the new IP, whether they are going to open up some sort of creators club and hand No Man's Sky to the community. And there's a reason why I say that too, coming up in the second section when we're listening to Sean. The freedom to mod is worth more than the mods themselves for me personally. Yeah, I don't, I, that's almost like a Chinese haiku to me. I don't really understand where you're going from. Uh, yeah. Um, but there we go, anyhow. <laughs> First vote, 100% my choice. Okay, Lord of the Apes, thank you. Yeah, cool. Banana Monkey, or Monike, or something. I use only the visual enhancing ones, such as a dud sky colours. Yeah, I know a lot of content creators like to use the one that stops the sort of, the grains coming at you when you're pulsing, because it really upsets your video upload. And I know there's a few other mods that some content creators use to maybe change the spawn rate of ships or or little 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 tiny things that just sort of help their actual streams when with entertainment wise, you know? Should be in private servers, not public ones, otherwise no issues. Yeah, I kind of feel that's that's also a thing, but then private server side i mean you're talking like the likes of uh, minecraft and stuff aren't you i don't know whether it ever move that way but that's an idea chris martin i don't play any game unmodded mainly because of lack of time to grind for progress okay so there are mods that aren't sort of visual sorts of style -y. there are some mods that are to make it a little bit simpler to progress 
So the mods that I've installed are just visual enhancements. I've never played with those mods, so I can't really comment. But, you know, there's now the changing of difficulty settings inside of No Man's Sky, so I don't even know whether you need mods in No Man's Sky to achieve what you're hoping for there, Chris. Okay, so we've got Jemmy... Bo I, 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 I'm going to butcher your name every time I read it, mate. I am playing Ages of Empire, the new one on the Xbox game, allows mods to be used better, yet they have a whole store of mods that you can download for free in-game. Hello, games. We don't have this on console, only on PC. Vote is for the last one. Okay, nice one. Sweet. So there we go. We've got quite a lot of feedback from the community. Thank you very much for all your feedback. Thank you very much for all your votes. We've got quite a lot of votes in a very short period of time. Nine hours, 170 votes. You guys are freaking awesome. Yes, you are. Anyway, let's go and have a look what Sean Murray said when they brought Origins. Now, I have upped the quality as far as I can with this. Okay, people. And it doesn't get any better. <laughs> and this is an IGN video. I don't know whether this was through Zoom or something. It was yeah, probably during lockdown. In fact, he mentions at the end it was at lockdown. But I'm not going to play the full thing. I'm just going to play maybe the first half of this until we get to where he starts talking about sandworms, uh, which is, is quite interesting too. I mean, my thoughts and feelings on sandworms is he says, sandworms aren't fun because imagine that they kill you after a thousand hours play. Mate, you added in tornadoes that do exactly that and freaking meteorites. I know I'd rather do battle with a sandworm than get hit on the head by a, a random meteorite. Anyway, here we go. Let's, let's hear what he's got to say about his problem. Kind of big yearly update like we did next and beyond. This is it. The fundamental thing is that we have this universe that we built like four years ago and we released it and we said that thing of oh, even we don't know what's out there but it was true to an extent right we we didn't know the kind of planets people were going to start up on and, and then actually that hasn't been true for the last four years for us we have a ever-evolving game but that universe has been reasonably static Right? The, the same terrains and biomes and, and worlds out there to explore. We've kind of calmed them down, actually. We've removed some of the craziness, if anything. And Origins is kind of, you know, yes, it's another update, but it's it's kind of a, a new start for us in some ways. And we kind of wanted to get that across, that this isn't just, this isn't an end. It isn't just, here is a, a an update with some more content in. It's something quite fundamental for us. We're adding more diversity, more variation to that universe, which is something that we haven't really done that much. But also we're we're adding like literal new planets we're kind of first thing come into the universe stuff of that. But we have this this really nice problem, which is we have this universe that the community kind of owns, right? They've built bases on it, they've built, you know, communities. They've gone off and had adventures, made discoveries, and then we come along and we say, well, we want to make new planets, <laughs> you know, new worlds, new things. We want to freshen all of this up. And so we were trying to find ways to do that without destroying what's gone before. Okay, so basically what he says next is... No, they've changed up some of the existing planets. You might have woken up, or you might have gone to sleep on one planet with blue grass and woken up the next day and the grass is red. You know, that's the sort of fundamental changes that were made in a roundabout way. And now I want to get into why I don't think it's going to move past that. I mean, there was a few other things that he said there, you know, with the whole it's a nice problem. But then when you look at his face, what's his face telling you there? It kind of says something else doesn't it and he says that the community now own the universe so there's a couple of suggestions that i've got towards the end of this and how i would go about fixing these nice problems that they have over at hello games but before i do that i'm going to jump into my modded no man's sky play and i'm going to show you why i don't think mods are going to see the light of day and it's because of some of these things that sean mentioned okay jums well you can see i'm in game right now and yeah I am over by the portal inside of the Nexus. Now just imagine if Hello Games did implement a mod, like I've got playing right now, or added in a super formula, or anything like that, anything that's going to change the planet's sort of generation. Uh, let's just hit on up a, a base that's actually on the planet's surface. We'll hit this one up here, and we're going to load that in. I'm going to see exactly what this mod has done to the planet. 
Okay, so I'm now falling through the planet, <laughs> and now I'm actually inside of the base. Okay, so that was a little bit janky, but we can deal with that. We can deal with that. But now let's have a look at how this base sits on the planet's surface, or if it does at all. It's not. It's actually under the planet's surface. That's why we're seeing all the rocks up here. So the landing pad and all of this base is actually underneath the planet's core at the moment, people. And that's going to happen with so many people's bases and planets and it's it, it's just not going to happen is it let's see if it puts me on the planet's surface now there we are so you'll see this is what the planet looks like with the mod on and it looks freaking awesome i mean yeah that's that's a really cool planet with the really cool mod but that base is now buried underneath this gnarly terrain that it's now rendered in peeps in the view of earth so it's completely broken that base so all the bases will be completely broken in No Man's Sky, or the vast majority of them will be broken inside of No Man's Sky, if they do anything massive to the algorithms that generate our planets. So where he says, you know, they've added in extra variety and extra planets into No Man's Sky, that's what they actually bloody did. They spawned in new planets. So there might have been a system with only two planets, that system's now got three planets, and that's where they added in the new biome. So it didn't touch other players actual bases <laughs> which and i think they've done it in systems where there weren't bases i don't know what they actually done for sure but it, it does seem well actually there were some of my systems where i had bases and a new planet spawned in um so yeah and maybe that statement isn't quite true but yeah they, they birthed in new planets to get around their problem which I would like to think rather than spawning in new planets to get around their problem, what might be easier to get around their problem is to spawn in an alternate universe. I mean, they've, they've hinted about the realm of glass and also the void for so long. They could put in either of these two places. It's like the realm of glass. That's supposed to be where all the sentinels come from. The sentinels hate the travelers mining resources and all sorts. You know, they turn up and they police you. So inside a Sentinel space, it would make sense that base building is just completely restricted. You can't do it. You can't build a base inside of the realm of glass where the Sentinels come from. And then Hello Games can do what they like there. They can add in all sorts of gnarly sort of algorithms, add in planets like this, where there isn't that nice problem of the community owning that universe. Because the realm of glass could be their universe. That could be for the developers to do whatever the fudge they like with which I think is a happy sort of fix for this sort of issue. If you want to call it an issue, because I don't know, I think they could deliver in this another way. Let me um, let me just make myself nice and large on the screen again, people in the view of us. So another way that they could get around this sort of issue is to just do a galactic reset. I know that they've said that they've got a nice problem that the, um, you know, the community own this space. And yes, they've put up shrines and monuments to even pass away loved ones and all sorts of other shenanigans. But if they actually made it so when you go to a base computer, you can hit up a base computer of one of your favorite bases, one of those meaningful bases, one of those monuments or whatever, and you can hit a star on it to add it to a favorites and maybe allow it so the actual player base can set at least six bases or, or five, and you know, a threshold that sounds quite happy to Hello Games. Ha had a favorite on it and then after they've done the galactic reset they've done the whatever you put down a new base computer where the old base computer used to be even if the terrain's changed and gone all wavy davy and it would have buried your old base you can then put down a base computer hit on up your saved favorites it brings up those five bases that you've saved and you can restore that monument back on the planet where it was and where you're happy to have that monument placed again that that could work too so there are workarounds for this issue but do i think that hello games is going to do, go to that extent to deliver that in it's hard to say but for now in the current way of things and what we've seen and what sean murray has said i really don't know whether either of those two options are going to be explored this late into development or else they would have already been in place already unless it really is something more difficult than i can envisage and imagine you know, especially since it's now coming to more platforms. It kind of feels like it's the final hurrah. And bringing No Man's Sky to the likes of Switch and bringing it to iOS and maybe even Android perhaps in the future. You know, if they do that, you know, it's bringing it to previous gen platforms where a lot of this nice sort of rendering stuff and the algorithms that probably sit behind complexities of planets like I've just demoed. 
probably is going to melt those platforms, to be honest. You know, they're already struggling to place in settlements or um, really complex bases or really complex planets even. So it's it's one of those. It depends, doesn't it? It depends how well they can optimize their algorithms and how they can squeeze everything they can out of the code. But I, I would never say never when it comes to Hello Games. I never thought it would come to Switch, but it did. So, you know, the jury is kind of out, but I just wanted to put out there my thoughts and feelings on mods inside of the actual um, community space and them being used and whether, whether it's worth hyping that one day we might get to see modded sort of planets inside of our known universe with inside of No Man's Sky. Another way that it could be done is I've already said this is the Switch version, which is quite important. Maybe when it comes to iOS and Switch, and if it does come to Android, maybe that's going to be one version for all of those sort of platforms, the platforms that have already reached their plateau and threshold. That's what you've got, that's what you pay for, and that's what you have in. You know, and then maybe the last gen consoles, the PS4 and the old Xbox, maybe they're going to sit in some sort of middle ground limbo, whereas all the next gen are going to get all the visual improvements and enhancements, where any gameplay enhancements might trickle down to those middle platforms, those limbo platforms that I just mentioned. There's ways and means that Hello Games can implement next gen items for next gen players and still try to satisfy those on previous gen and maybe even trickle all the way down to the likes of, say, the Switch and the iOS platforms and the mobile platforms. But I kind of see that the mobile platforms, they might go a completely other route. You know, they might go down the DLC route. They might go with, um, you know, visual enhancements, cosmetics, that sort of shenanigans. Who knows what the future says, but... Hello Games has got options, is what I'm saying, basically. And maybe one of those options on the table could be ways to introduce more variety. I mean, even in that interview with Sean Murray, he goes on to say, well, what's next for us is, you know, Origins is just a step back in time. You know, we, we've actually stripped out some of the craziness that we had before to drop into game because we had to. You know, Sean Murray actually said that inside of that interview clip that I gave you there. So they've already dialed it down. They've dialed it down. They just they, they could dial it back up. <laughs> you know, it's, it's been done in the past. When they delivered next in, they did a mini reset where people had to restore their last base in a similar sort of way that I mentioned, but it only restored the last base they built, which did upset a few people. But if they can do it with that favorite system that I mentioned, where you can restore up to say five or six bases, that might be enough to satisfy every element of the community. Anyway, sound off in the comments. Let me know what you think, because I love reading your comments and your feedback. And until next time, people, you've been awesome. I've nearly finished my cup of tea. It's right down low. I don't want to tip it further, or else I'm going to end up pouring it on the desk. But I've got it's about there. It's about there. It's, it's doing good. Yeah, I'm going to finish that off. But have a good one, people. And um, bye, goodbye, and goodbye again.